What if I told you that you could power your Gutenberg block designs with dynamic content pulled straight from your database? And that you could display these designs anywhere on your site and swap out content with a click of a button? Even better, you can replace the core functionality of expensive paid plugins like WP Coupons or Lasso while retaining full design control. All of this is made possible when you combine the power of Gutenberg blocks with advanced custom fields and the query loop. And today I'm gonna to show you how to set it up for your own sites. Hi, I'm Matt from buildthatwebsite.com and I teach people how to build professional, profitable websites from scratch. If that's something you're interested in, make sure to like and subscribe so you'll see my content in your feed more often. Now, if you're ready, let's start building with a simple example using standard WordPress posts before we dive into more complex use cases powered by custom fields. Okay, so I've built this basic related posts template for an inline related post using generate blocks. And this is almost identical um, to a block that I built in a previous tutorial. If you want to check it out, you'll find it right up in the corner there. But it's just an inline flex layout with three columns. And I've inserted dummy content in here. And of course, you could just swap out this content on each of an individual post, but that takes time and as things update, for example, you change the um, headline of a post, you'd have to switch it everywhere, and that's just a pain. So let me show you an easier way to do this. We're gonna insert a query loop, so I'm gonna just type query loop, and I'm gonna be using the generate blocks query loop here because I'm using generate blocks to design my template. We're gonna start with a blank template, and if you open your, up your query loop, you can see there's a grid and a post template inside. So what we wanna do is grab our container and drag it into the post template. And so far, nothing's gonna happen other than it's getting duplicated. But let's fine tune our query here. So if we go into the query loop block, we can see that we want to show one post in this case. And for the post type, post is a good option. And as my parameter, you can do anything. You could select post from a certain category or tag. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose individual posts. So I'm gonna go to include post. And let's say I want to link to this post. So I'm gonna click update. And once again, nothing has happened because we haven't added dynamic content to our template yet, but let's change our template. So we're gonna go in here and let's start with the image. I'm gonna scroll to the bottom once I have the image selected and you'll see this dynamic data option here in Generate Blocks. I'm just gonna click Enable Dynamic Data. And I've already selected this, but you can just choose the data source. I'm gonna choose it from the current post. And by current post, it means the current post inside the query loop that we're running. The image source is the featured image and the link source is gonna to link to that post. So it's already pulling that in from the post. We could do the same thing for the headline. So we're gonna click on the headline, go down to dynamic data, enable dynamic data, data source, current post, content source, the title. And again, it's gonna to link to the single post. And we can do the same thing here. We can make this the excerpt. So we're gonna enable dynamic data, content source, the excerpt. You can adjust the excerpt length in terms of words if you want to make it longer or shorter. Uh, we just go with 16 right here. I'm not gonna to link to anything for this. And for the button, you can do the same thing. Dynamic data, we already have this enabled and it's pulling it from the, uh, the current post as the link. And now if I preview this on the page, you can see this is a perfect contextual link. And if I open it up, it opens that post in another page. And just to show you that this is working as expected, we can adjust our query template here. So let's just change and we're gonna show Whoop, sorry. We're gonna show this post instead, or so let's try this post instead. See, no matter which post you choose, it's pulling the dynamic data from that post. Okay, for this next part, there's a couple things we're gonna need. First, you're gonna need advanced custom fields 6.1 or higher. The free version will work fine. And secondly, you're gonna need a plugin that lets you display dynamic data such as advanced custom fields inside Gutenberg blocks. There are several options available, Cadence Blocks Premium, Stackable Premium, and the one that I'm gonna be using for this tutorial, Generate Blocks Premium. Regardless of which plugin you choose, they're all gonna work about the same. Just know that there are no good free options available as far as I know. So whichever option you choose, it's likely gonna be a paid plugin. If you plan on grabbing one of these plugins and you'd like to support the channel at the same time, uh, please use one of the links down in the video description. I really appreciate it. All right, let's get building. All right, so here on my dashboard, let me show you how I set this all up. And this can all be done with the free version of advanced custom fields. And what I did is I created a new custom post type called featured brands. So to do that, you just go to ACF and we're gonna go to post types. And here's the post type I created. And this is how easy it is to create a new post type. You can just click add new and you'll say my custom post type. 
You can insert some labels here. It'll automatically generate the post type key. You can add custom taxonomies if you want, but we don't need that here. And the only custom things that I had to do here is I want to change the visibility to private. That is, there's no actual front end page for each of, each of these posts that I'm creating. And under the advanced configuration, uh, you want to make sure that custom fields is enabled. And you also want to make sure that the REST API is enabled. However, that isn't enabled by default, so it shouldn't be an issue. And once you've created a custom post type, you can see it'll show up right here. Now the next step, and we're gonna use the one I've already created uh, as an example, is to create custom fields for this post type. So you'll see if I go to this one that I've enabled, I have these custom fields available here. So to do that, under ACF, we're gonna go to field groups. Now the next step is to create a group of custom fields that you can pull this data from on your custom post type. And to do that, you just click add new under the field group section of ACF. I've already created one, it's called affiliate data, and I'm just gonna edit it to show it's how it's set up. So, so far we have three fields. We have a brand name, which is a text field, brand image, which is an image, and a brand link, which is a URL. And the only settings that I've set up is just to display this field group when post type is equal to feature brands, the custom post type that I set up. And just to show you how easy it is, let's add a couple more fields. So we're gonna add a field called uh, product blurb or brand blurb. It'll be just a little excerpt like, hey, this is why you should buy this product. And we're gonna add one more field and we'll make it a price. So we'll call this a number and we'll say brand price. We'll create the field name brand price. And again, you can customize the field names if you want. Um, and as far as presentation goes, I'm just gonna prepend a dollar sign before the input and we'll save changes. And now if we go back to our featured brands, I'll go here and I click on edit on the one I already have created. And if I scroll down, you can see that we have our two new fields here. So I'll just paste in um, some content for that one and we'll set a brand price of $49. I'll click update. And next, let's create a new custom post in this post type. So you can create an unlimited number of posts. Um, I'm gonna click add new featured brand and we'll call this one Astra. Brand name is Astra. We'll add an image. Brand link. Add our blurb. We'll add a price and click publish. And that's all there is. Now to use this, let's go back to our post here. I'm just gonna reload so I can have all the new data. All right, now let me show you how to set this all up uh, in the Gutenberg editor. So you can see here that I have this generic template that I've set up and I will again make this downloadable if you click the link in the description. Um, but so far I just have placeholder content in here. And what we wanna do is pull this in the query loop again. So it's inside a query loop and we're gonna to go to the query loop settings. Now by default, it will pull from posts, but we don't want posts, we want my custom post type featured brands. We're gonna choose one post per page and then under the include posts section, this is again, I is added as a parameter. Um, we're gonna choose Astra in this case. I'll click update. Now nothing happened because we haven't enabled dynamic content for any of these uh, items in the loop. So first let's start with the image. Under dynamic data, we're gonna say enab enable dynamic data. And for current posts, we're gonna be pulling the image source from post meta. Now this basically means from custom fields. And for the post meta field that we're gonna use, now as long as you are using the premium version of generate blocks, it will auto detect these ACF custom fields that you've added. So we're gonna choose the brand image, meta fields, and I'm also gonna have a link there, I want to actually the image to have a link and it's gonna go to another post meta field, which in this case is the brand link field. I'm gonna do the same thing for the name, enable dynamic data, and for the post meta field, we're gonna make it the brand name. Now that's Astra. For the blurb, enable dynamic data, post meta, and we're gonna make that meta key the brand blurb. Here for our button, we're gonna keep the text the same for everything. But under dynamic data, we want to have the link be custom. Let's go post meta. And for the meta key, we're gonna do the brand link. And finally, I wanna show the price here, the product price. Now to get this custom price in here is a little bit trickier. We actually have to build a slightly more complex layout than just this text-based uh, headline. And that's because you can't mix dynamic content and non-dynamic content in the same element currently. So I could add a new container. 
And let me just drag this headline in there. And I'm just going to duplicate this to keep the, the styling. And I'm going to turn them both into inline blocks. So we'll take, make that inline block and this one inline block, just to show you how this is going to work. And we'll make the content of this one from dollars and the dynamic content of this one, we're actually going to pull it from the post. So we'll say uh, it's post meta and for the meta key, we're going to use the brand price. Then we just need to get rid of that right padding that I had on there for some reason. This is our completed card. And like I said, all you have to do, if you wanted to display a different product, just go to the query loop that we're using here. And instead I'm gonna show the generate blocks product, click update, and it's completely changed, okay? And if you click the link, this will go to generate blocks now instead of Astra. Same thing with this link right here, okay? Now, the final step to make this easily reusable is once you've got this whole query loop template set up, including your post template and the query loop template, you're just going to want to go here and we're going to write, we're going to click on these three dots. And we're just going to say create reusable block and we'll just call this um, affiliate product query or something. And now if I just want to reinsert this on a different page, now let me go to a completely different page. I'll go to this page here. Let's say I want to insert one of these affiliate callouts in this page. I can just start typing the name of the reusable block, go to affiliate products query. And then the next step is to convert to regular blocks. This allows you to adjust it without uh, breaking the way it's is saved on your site. And we're simply going to change the query. So we're going to remove that included post and we'll change it to generate blocks, say for the, this post. And that's all you have to do. It's that easy. And you can have this entire database of uh, saved custom products in this custom post type. And you can just query different ones on each page without having to create all these different templates. You just have one saved template. You just query a different post each time. Now, the truth is we've only just scratched the surface of what you can build with Gutenberg blocks. And if you're ready to keep learning, check out these videos right over here. I'll catch you in the next one.